Hi everyone. Uh, I am Madam Rosmaya. Uh, I'm a PU physics teacher at SMJKU Wakajang. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, in this video, we are going to discuss on the topic of gravitational field strength G. So the subtopic for this video is variation of G with latitude. Different parts of the Earth experience different gravitational forces. So this is because the Earth is oval shape. The force of gravity is stronger at the poles and weaker at the equator. Gravity is stronger when you are closer to the center of the Earth. So in this illustration given, at the North Pole, the weight is maximum and at the uh, equator, the weight is minimum. For the given value here, in this example, uh, let's say the person has a mass of 100 kg. So at the equator, the G is 9.78 Newton per kilogram. Therefore, the weight of the person becomes 978 Newton. Whereas, at the pole, uh, the weight will become 983 Newton because the G value is 9.83 Newton per kilogram. So, compare these two, the G is larger at the pole. The radius of the Earth at the equator R1 is greater than the radius at the pole R2 by about 21 km. So radius R1 is larger than R2. So in this uh, diagram, so R2 compare with R1. So R, R1 is larger than R2. From the previous uh, lesson, we have discussed uh, that G equals to uh, gravitational constant G times mass of the planet divided by radius of the planet, square of the radius of the planet. So this means that the G gravitational field strength is inversely proportional to the uh, radius of the planet, square of the radius of the planet. So therefore, G at the equator uh, is less than G at the pole. The value of G increases from the equator to the poles. Next, we are going to determine the uh, G value at the pole and at the equator. So this is the Earth. And the angular velocity of the Earth is uh, omega. So this is uh, at the equator and at the latitude. So let's say the radius of the Earth is given by the capital letter R. And here also R, radius of the Earth. The angle uh, at the latitude here is given by theta. So... The angle here also theta because uh, alternate angle. So the radius uh, at this latitude is given by uh, using trigonometric ratio. So we use cos theta equals to adjacent per hypotenuse. So becomes R per uh, capital letter R radius of the planet. So cross multiply, we get R equals to uh, capital letter R cos theta. So this is radius of the circle here uh, at the latitude. So let's say the object here on the latitude here in the circular motion as the uh, earth uh, rotating with uh, angular velocity omega. So the, from the Newton second law, F equals to MA, the centripetal force equals to MR omega squared. And, uh, and we substitute this R value 
into the equation so we get mr cos theta omega squared so simplify this becomes mr omega squared cos theta so this is the centripetal force uh, at this latitude and the uh, uh, mg weight of the object if the shape of the earth is uh, is a spherical shape so the mg is towards the center of the earth and if the earth is a um, oval shape so the mg prime uh, will be uh, in this uh, direction eh, about this direction so next uh, we draw we separate the body uh, of the body so we use uh, a vector diagram uh, to solve for uh, g prime we are going to determine this uh, g prime so drawing the complete the vector for this uh, diagram so we use uh, we can use parallelogram method or triangle method So let's say we use a triangle method. So this is uh, mg, uh, mg prime, and the uh, yeah, the yellow line here as m uh, mr omega squared cos theta. So it form a triangle. So we can use a uh, cosine rule to solve for uh, g prime. So from from cosine rule. If this angle is given at this point, so uh, the three sides is given as A, B and C. So the C squared is equals to A squared plus B squared minus 2 AB cos theta. So refer to this uh, triangle. So we apply the cosine rule. So the angle given here theta, so opposite this angle is Mg prime. So mg prime squared equals to uh, the side uh, that made two sides that make this angle is mg and mr omega squared cos theta. So becomes mg squared plus mr omega squared cos theta bracket squared, and then minus the two times uh, mg uh, this two sides mg times mr omega squared cos theta. And then don't forget we have the cos theta here. So we apply the cosine rule for this uh, triangle. And we cancel out uh, all the m. m squared. So the equation becomes g prime squared equals to g squared plus r omega squared cos theta bracket squared minus uh, 2g. Uh, bracket r omega squared cos theta then cos theta again here so simplify the equations becomes g prime squared equals to g squared plus r omega squared uh, omega to the power of 4 2 times 2 here so omega to the power of 4 and cos squared theta minus uh, 2g r omega squared and then cos theta times cos theta becomes uh, cos squared theta so from this equation uh, we continue uh, at the end pole the theta value is equals to 90 degrees so we substitute into the equation here cos 90 degrees is equals to 0 so the equation uh, above here becomes g prime equals to uh, g so from here g prime squared equals to g squared Squaring both sides, we get g prime equals to g. The other terms become zero because cos ninety is equals to zero. Uh, at the equator, the angle theta is equals to zero. So we substitute into the equation here. Uh, cos zero is equals to one. So therefore, the equation becomes g squared plus r squared omega to the power of four. Uh, this one become 1 then minus 2g r omega squared 
uh, times 1 because cos t cos uh, 0 is 1. Okay, then uh, we can simplify this. Uh, becomes uh, we factorize this so becomes uh, bracket g minus r omega squared uh, squared then squaring both side we get g prime equals to g minus r omega squared so this is the g prime uh, at the equator and compare these two this is uh, g at the north pole g prime at the north pole is g and g prime uh, at the equator is g minus r omega squared. Okay, compare these two values. Uh, we are uh, we have proven that uh, the g value is greater at the pole uh, because the g here is minus by r omega squared. So let's say uh, if the value here is uh, ten. So, 10 minus uh, a value given, r omega squared, will become less. Less than 10. So, the conclusion, uh, g at the pole is bigger than g at the equator. So, if you are given uh, g at the north pole, so the g at the equator will become g minus r omega squared. And if you are given a G at the equator, then the G at the north pole here will become a plus R omega squared. So, depends on the G given uh, in the question. So, we try one example. A spherical planet of radius 6.4 times 10 to the power of 6 meter rotates about its axis at the rate of one revolution a day. The speed of rotation is then increased. What is the speed of rotation of the planet when bodies at its equator start to escape into space? Acceleration due to gravity at the pole of the planet is given 10 meter per second. So the solution is, so from these uh, two conclusion we made, so which one is to be used? So, it depends on the G given. So, the G given is at the pole. So, we choose uh, the first one. Okay. At the pole, G is given as 10 meter per second. So, you can uh, ignore uh, this equation. So, refer to this uh, diagram. So, at the pole, 10 meter per second. Therefore, at the equator becomes 10 minus R omega squared. So, we can determine uh, omega squared from here. Okay, another information given uh, is uh, the start to escape into space means that 10 minus r omega squared is equals to 0. So, we bring uh, 10 to the right side and eh, becomes uh, r omega squared equals to 10. And then omega equals to square root, square root of 10 per 6.4 times 10 to the power of 6. And omega, uh, angular velocity or speed of rotation is equals to 1.25 times 10 to the power of negative 3 radian per second. So this is the answer. Okay. That's all for the video. Uh, thank you for watching. If you like this video, video so please uh, subscribe.